Hey, welcome to Get to Know Me. Here's where I interview interesting people and my favorite people in the world. And here today I have Judge Rosemary Aquilina. Okay, so my first question is, if you could do anything for a day, what would it be? Write all day. What would you write? I write fiction. So that's the, one of the ways I relax. And usually I only have time to write an hour a day, sometimes more, sometimes less. And if I had something that I wanted to do most of all, it would be to sit and write for 20 hours. <laughs> yeah. I know that seems like homework to most people, right? You're thinking, oh, she's crazy, but I really enjoy doing it. So I can create my own world and it's very relaxing to me. No, I understand because that's how I write music. So, yeah. Oh, see, you know yeah. what kind of music you write? No, hip hop and R&B. Uh -huh. Wow, that's fabulous. <laughs> so you tell a story in your music. I write stories, same, same thing, but it's a lot of fun, right? Time goes by really quickly. Yeah. If you can go back in time and change one thing, what would it be? Oh, that's, you know, there's so many things I want to change. Um, and that and that being said, if I had to change something, I wouldn't be who I was. I probably would have learned earlier to use my voice and have conversations about why I need what I need rather than being stubborn and acting out or getting mad. And I think it's really something that people grow into. But had I learned to be more patient with others as I explained and kept explaining what I wanted to do, I might have found an easier path getting to where I am. Okay. Besides necessity, what's one thing you cannot go a day without? Coffee. <laughs> Lots of coffee. I always have coffee. What, what do you drink? You drink it straight black or how you drink it? I drink uh, coffee with some cream in it. I usually use a protein drink instead of real cream. Uh, and I like lattes, espresso, coffee in any way. And I don't want to discount my family because I don't ever want to be a day without my family. But aside, and I consider them a necessity, but aside from that, I've got to have my coffee. I don't need makeup or hairspray. I need my coffee. How many cups a day do you drink? Oh, gosh, probably six to eight, sometimes mm. more, sometimes less. It depends what I'm doing, but I drink a lot of coffee. Is it based on how you, how you like it or is it just, does it help? You know, I get migraines. And so first of all, the coffee helps the migraines. But second, I love coffee. I have coffee, ice cream, uh, espresso beans covered in chocolate. Um, I, I put toast in my coffee. I just like everything with coffee. Is it like what's is it a certain type of migraine? Because I get bad migraines too. I always have since I had a uh, concussion. So is, is it a certain type of coffee? Um, it's not the cluster. It's just your average um, migraine. But actually, one of the things that has helped, I'm getting the Botox for migraine shots. That has helped. I go every few months for that. But also, I got a Daith piercing. Okay. And that helps. If you get someone who does it really a good job, you go to a tattoo parlor and they, some, there's usually an expert who puts the piercing. It's in your ear. It's on a tattoo point. Not tattoo point. I'm sorry. It's on a, an acupuncture point. And they put it in, in this little earring, and believe it or not, it has cut my migraines by about 50% at least. Yeah, my fiance has one. And I, so, but I, I don't, I just, I heard of it, but I haven't really looked into it. You know, it's, it's cheap. It's pretty painful at first. It heals pretty slowly. At least mine healed really slowly, but it really, really works. And I talked to my neurologist about it. And I said, is this really a thing? Because I wasn't really a believer. I, I believe in acupuncture, but I didn't ever hear of a day of piercing. And my secretary said, look, I had a headache for a week straight. I got the piercing. I haven't had a headache since. So I thought, well, I'm going to go in and try it. But I talked to my neurologist and he said, if you go in the airport, you will see fellow migraine sufferers. They all have that piercing. And you get the piercing on the side of the headache that you have. So I have headaches on my right side and that's where I have the date piercing and it has made a difference. It was about 80 bucks. It was the best $80 I ever spent.
Mm. Right. What's the worst thing? You write music, you'll look really cool with a piercing, right? And that's what I thought. Well, I'll probably look a little old to have a piercing, but it might be cool. And it's just helped so much. So I'm thankful to the tattoo parlor. The guy who did it was just fabulous. Yeah, I, I just thought it was a style. I didn't know it was the actual actually helped with my brain. Yeah. Okay. What's the longest you've gone without sleeping? Why? Without sleeping? Yep. Uh, about three days. And was it a certain reason or you were just up? Well, I've done it a couple times. First of all, as a mom, when you're in labor, um, and then once you had the babies crying and I had twins. So I, there were, I don't know, days. I, I don't think I slept at all. Um, but also when I was studying for the bar exam, I set out a whole bunch of days where I literally, that's all I did was study. And I would stay up and study, study, study until I couldn't study anymore. And then I'd sort of crash. Um, as I've gotten older, though, I couldn't do it. I, if I'm going to stay up, I can stay up maybe 26, 28 hours. I've done that when I'm traveling. But other than that, uh, I, I can't do it. It takes me days to recover. <laughs> if you can have any exotic animal as a pet, what would it be? An exotic animal? I don't really want an exotic animal. Um, probably a jaguar. A uh, cougar, a tiger, something in that family, because I love cats. I was actually up last night, couldn't sleep, and I was looking at Maine Coons. Those are the enormous cats, yeah. and they're just gorgeous. And I thought, well, should I? I have two puppies. Do I need a cat? And do I want a small one, or do I want one of these enormously beautiful cats? So I love animals. I just don't, the exotic ones, <laughs> they scare me a little bit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> What three items would you take with you on a deserted island? Hmm. Let's see. Coffee. <laughs> Do I get to have family members? No? It would count as uh, one. <laughs> if you, one, one, one person. One, okay. Coffee, a gorgeous man I get along with. And uh, let me see. Probably a comfortable robe because I like to hang out in my robe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who would you want to play you in a movie about your life? Hmm. Um, in a movie about my life. Let me see. Uh, I have never thought about that. Um, probably, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, Sandra Bullock? I think she's, uh, I don't think we look alike, but I think she could pull off the quirkiness in my personality really, really well. Yeah, it's not always about the look, it's about who can embody the role. Exactly right. Yeah, you got it there. I think there's so many times that um, we see actors playing someone and they don't exactly have to have the look, but once they act them, you really feel the presence of that person. So. Yeah. Yeah, you're exactly right. Who is the most intelligent person you know? My father. And what has he taught you along the way that helped you get to where you are now? My father and I haven't always gotten along, but what he has taught me is that uh, with every baby comes a blessing. He has taught me that when you put out kindness in the world, whatever it is, you get it back 10 times. He has taught me that no matter where we are, God is with us. He has taught me that the most important thing you'll ever have is your children. And that it's not about having money in the world. If you have your education, you can do anything. Yeah. Okay. What is your definition of success? being happy in everything that you do. And when you go to work, it's more like having fun than feeling like you're at work. You know, you have to be at work doing whatever somebody tells you. Yeah. My definition is to go to work every day, look forward to it, and it's part of something you want to do in your routine every day. If you don't feel like you're doing what you should be doing, then do something else. Life's too short. So enjoy everything you do. And that includes work. I've, I'm a judge. I'm a writer. Uh, I'm a mom. I cook. I, I do so many different things. I teach. I love to teach. I would teach for free. 
And that's how I feel about being a judge. I'd be a judge for free. Obviously we have to live. And so, and I do motivational speaking. There's so many things I do and I would do none of those or I'd find an alternate if I didn't enjoy them. I think the beauty of what I do or what I have ended up doing in my life are all things that I truly love doing. And I enjoy them, not just because of what I get from them, but because of the interactions I have with other people. And I find that the most valuable part of every job I have is the people who I engage with. That's what I, that's what I try to tell people. Like, if you're not happy or you're not in a safe space where you feel that you can be your best self, you shouldn't be there in the first place. Right. And, you know, it's important to give those messages, like with your music, you give messages, right? Yeah. And sometimes they're happy and sometimes they're sad and sometimes they're just, OK, I'm going to put this out there, right, to make people think. And I think that's so important. And what a great way to spend your time. And you get so much back from that. And that's how I feel about my writing and speaking and everything I do. And if I lose that, I'll move on to the next thing. And my final question, if you were a ruler of your own country, what would be your first law you introduced? Jeez. There's so many things that have to be done. Um, I would make sure that everyone had the necessities of life so that we're all equal. We have home, we have medical treatment, um, we have enough food and it's not really about the money that we gather, but rather the joy that we have in living in a society that we enjoy being in. So would you have classism like upper class and would you have it like that or would it be equal all around the board? I think that it would be equal in terms of what people have. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And yeah. then, and then you know, you would take what you have, like you with your music, and you would be able to work on it and excel. And if that's which, how you used the gifts that you had, then great. So I think people would have the opportunity to excel, but there wouldn't be the fighting over things that other people have or stealing of tennis shoes that someone wants or any of those things that, that we see. And people could really start out equally and then use the gifts and talents they have to make the place even better. I know it's wishful thinking, it's probably a fairy tale, but I hope someday we get there. Yeah, I feel like brands made things more hard for people because people see high-end brands and they want that and then make people, like you said, steal things off people and all that. Yeah, you know what? I had a girlfriend and she felt exactly that same way. And you know what she did is she would go and get um, from the Salvation Army or those kinds of places and get some name brand jeans that people threw away, you know, gave away, they were tired of them, whatever. And she didn't care the size, she simply took the label off. And then she would get her kids some new jeans that were cheaper and nice and sew the label on. <laughs> and her kids, until they were older, they never caught on. I don't even know if they to this day know that. But yeah, why do we have to have so much status in a label? Shouldn't it be about what we have within? Yeah, like if it's supposed to be a necessity, it shouldn't be that it's so expensive and all that to me. But I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with you. I don't go for the labels either because I, you know, I can't afford it. I, I'd rather spend the money on my kids, make sure they have what they need, pay for their college, do things like that, be able to take a vacation. If I bought all the labels our vacation would always be a stay home vacation. <laughs> so, yeah. Party and board games. but <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's really all, you know, it's the life we have and the choices we make. And hopefully we make good ones and we learn the lessons. I really believe that we're all here to learn lessons and then live a better life from those. Yep. And that was my final question. So um, you have anything you want to promote? Anything you have coming up new? Well, I have... Um, four books out there. And so I just had uh, an uh, audible book, uh, Just Watch Me. It's about my life. And um, then I have, uh, and I, that was in partnership with Hello Sunshine Audible and Reese Witherspoon. And so that's out there. A little bit daunting for me to talk about my life and then see the reactions of people. And then I have three novels out there, the, the fiction. The most recent is All Rise, and it's just a hoot. A lot of great characters. It's about a judge who 
gets bullied on the bench and says, I'd rather be a hairdresser. And so she opens a salon and her staff and some of the people she reformed on probation come with her. And then the chief judge who bullied her ends up dead and she's accused of the murder. So what can't be solved, but everything in a hair salon, right? <laughs> so it's just a lot of fun. And um, it just won an award, uh, the Sabo Awards and in the top 13, I think internationally. And then I have Triple Cross Killer, and that's more of a thriller, and also Feel No Evil, also more of a thriller. But uh, writing, uh, you'll see more books from me. And uh, where are all those available at for the people? Well, all of them are available on Amazon and Audible, and they come in all formats. So regular print, large print, uh, ebook, and Audible. So Audible's great. I have about 400 Audible books downloaded. I am never without a story. I listen to all sorts of things. So you do this wonderful podcast. Um, I, this is something I would listen to on my phone while I drive. I listen to all sorts of things, books on my phone, my iPad, my car. So I am never without um, material. Yeah, see me, I like, I love physical books. So yeah, I would be interested in physical yeah, you know, I've got the physical books too, but they're not always convenient to travel with. And I'm running out of space, quite honestly. <laughs> Aren't you running out of space? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Aunt, what are all your social media? So make sure to follow you on all of those. So it's Author Aquilina. I have Author Aquilina um, on Instagram and on uh, Facebook. It's just Rosemary Aquilina. There's also a website, um, rosemaryaquilina.com. And then on Twitter, um, again, it's uh, author Aquilina. Um, so if you just put in Aquilina, usually you'll find me. There's a few other Aquilinas out there, but uh, I'll be there. Rosemary Aquilina, Judge Aquilina, Google me, I'm there. Uh, always happy to talk with people. And I really, really appreciate you wanting to chat today. No problem, it was an honor to have you on. I really appreciate it. So can I ask you a couple questions? If you if you like, yes. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? I literally just started a week ago. <laughs> oh, really? You would not know that. You are doing an awesome job questioning. Yeah, I, I had, have been I had by a plan. All over. Yeah. And I just stuck with it and came to it. Yep. Yeah, you've got also got a really great radio voice. So, <laughs> how can we find your music? Well, honestly, I took it off of everything to be honest. Right. I stopped focusing on music and I'm trying to move into this. So I want this to be my main little platform so I can get this out rather All than right. music. So I have an idea for you. Okay. So when you do your intro, take a piece of your music and let's have an intro with your music. I'd love to hear it. Oh, yeah. I, I have. I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we can have an intro and an exit with your music and change it up so we get a taste of your music. I'd love to hear it. Okay. All right. Appreciate you for joining me. Thanks for asking. Have a wonderful day. You too.